Hi guys, welcome again to our channel. So right now, I am going to explain you about Docker's overview. What is Docker's and how we can use it? What's the advantages of that? And why it is required to use Docker's? First of all, what is Docker? So I will explain you in detail about their architecture, about the detail of the Docker's and why we can use it in real life scenario so if you are new to this channel consider subscribing and pressing bell icon for more updates here we begin with the actual content of dockers so first of all whenever we are working and whenever you have tried setting up a new project on your laptop or in your system have you used a virtualization tool like vmware and virtual box to run Ubuntu on your Windows or Mac machine. If your answer is to any of these questions is yes, you probably already know how much time it takes to set up the complete environment for your project running. It takes a minimum of an hour or so and sometimes much more that's totally dependent on how quick you are and how your system is behaving. What if I will tell you what you can do. Both of these tasks is just 30 minutes of time. Your activity is completed by using Docker. So first of all, what is Docker? Docker is an open platform for developing, shipping and running an application. Docker enables you to separate your application from your infrastructure so that you can deliver software quickly. Docker will help you to manage your infrastructure in the same way you manage your application by taking advantage of docker methodology for shipping testing and deploying code we can significantly reduce the delay between writing code and running it in production docker provides the ability to package and run an application in loosely isolated environment called a container docker provides the tooling of a platform to manage the life cycle of containers so before that whenever we are talking about the dockers the isolation and security allows you to run many containers simultaneously on a given host containers are light weighted because they don't need the extra load of hypervisor so whenever we are talking about the managed life cycle of a container so it's always required to develop your application and its supporting components using containers the containers becomes the unit for distributing and testing your application when you are already deploy your application into your production environment at a container or an orchestrated service this works the same whether your production environment is a local data center or a cloud data provider or a hybrid of the two so it's always required to keep in mind Security is a very important part whenever we are using with this. So, but run directly within the host machine kernel. This means you can run more containers on a given hardware combination than if you are using virtual machine. You can even run Docker containers within host machine that are actually virtual machines. So, how the Docker's engine will look like that? You can see here the Content of Docker engines, Docker engine in a client server application with these major components. CLI uses the Docker REST API to control or interact with the Docker daemon through scripting or direct CLI commands. Many other Docker applications use the underlying API and CLI, but a server, which is a type of long running program called a daemon process. So this is your server. The docker command is used to run this. A REST API, that is the second one. REST API which specifies interfaces that our program can use to talk to the daemon and instruct it what to do. Third is client docker CLI. So command line interface that is CLI client docker command will handle all of the content. Daemon creates and manages Docker objects such as images, 
containers, networks and volumes. So as you can see here, network container, image and data volumes are present here. It will be managed by CLI. So this is how the Docker engine will look like that. So Docker is licensed under the open source Apache 2.0 license. So what can I use Docker for? So fast consistent delivery of an application, responsive deplo deployment and scaling and third that is running more workloads on the same hardware. So let's dig into that and understand what all these components are. So these three, how we can give it an example of that and we'll see how it looks like. So first, fast consistent delivery of an application. It means Docker streamlines and deployment lifecycle by allowing developers to work in standardized environments using local containers which provides our application and services. Containers are great for continuous integration and continuously delivery that is CI-CD. Continuous improvement and continuous development is the workflows of Docker's. So consider an example just like our developer write code locally and share their work with their colleagues using Docker containers. So they use Docker to push their application into a test environment and execute automated and manual tests. When developers find bugs, they can fix them in the development environment and redeploy them to the test environment for testing and validation purpose. So it will handle our code on cloud but on C4 site. So when testing is complete, getting the fix to the customer is as simple as pushing an updated image to the production environment. So we are managing these stuff on Docker and everyone can accessing that code from different locations and different teams as well. So let's see second that is responsive development and scaling. Docker's container based platform allows for highly portable workloads, Docker containers can run on a developer's local laptop on physical or virtual machine, in a data center, on cloud providers or in a mixture of environments. Docker's portability and lightweight nature also make it easy to dynamically manage workloads, scaling up or tearing down application and services as business needs dictate in near real line. That is real time. So third is running more workloads on the same hardware. It means Docker is lightweight and fast. It provides a viable cost effective alternative to hypervisor based virtual machine. So you can use more of your compute capacity to achieve your business goals. Docker is a perfect for high density environment and for small and medium deployments where you need to do more with fewer resources. So who can have this learning? Like people from different roles are learning Docker. With that said, you have chosen the right course if you are a developer who wants to start working with containers, college students who want to learn production technologies, curious about Docker and want to learn about it in detail, at a professional level in some programming language and want to enhance your skill sets, a DevOps beginner is also a part of quick learner of Docker, which is very easy to use and secure as well. So let's understand the architecture of Docker. Docker uses a client server architectures that Docker client talks to the Docker daemons. That is, this is the client and it directly talks to the Docker daemon then which does the heavy lifting of building, running and distributing your Docker containers. The Docker client and daemon can run on the same system or you can connect a Docker client to a remote Docker daemon. The Docker client and daemon communicate using the REST API over Unix sockets and network interfaces. See, three major components are involved in the Docker architecture that is client, Docker host and registry. So let's un understand these things in detail. 
So Docker daemon listens for Docker API requests and manages Docker objects such as image, containers, networks and volume. A daemon can also communicate with other daemons to manage Docker services. So let's dig into Docker client. The Docker client is the primary way that many Docker's users interact with Docker. When you use commands such as docker run, the client sends these commands to Docker which carries them out. The Docker command uses the Docker API. The Docker client can communicate with more than one daemon. Let's move to the third part that is registry. So Docker registry stores Docker's images that Docker Hub is a public registry that anyone can use and Docker is configured to look for image on Docker Hub by default. You can even run your own private registry when you use the docker pull or docker run commands. The required images are pulled from configure registry. When you use the docker push command, your image pushed to your configured registry. So what is docker objects? When we are using docker, we are creating using image container networks, volume, plugins and other objects. These sections are a brief contain where we are storing our data. So images and image is a read-only template and instruction for creating a docker container often an image based on other, another image with some additional customization. For example, when we build an image which is based on the Ubuntu image but install the Apache web server and our application as well as the configuration details need to make application run. So we might create our own image or our might only use those created by others and publish in registry. To build our own image, we can create a docker file with a simple syntax for defining the steps needed to create the image and run it. So what is containers? A container is a runnable instance for a, of an image. We can create start, stop, move or delete a container running the docker API or CLI that is command line interface. You can connect a container to one or more networks, attach storage to it or even create a new image based on the current state. So by default a container is relatively well isolated from other containers and it hosts machine. We can control how isolated a continuous network storage or other underlying subsystems or from other containers or from the host machine. So this is how we can configure and use it as a container but at a service level, services allow us to scale container across multiple docker daemons which all works together as a swarm with multiple managers and workers. So how we can use the docker run command? So whenever we are using the run command, it will always having in different stages. So this is the command which we are using for running our docker. So if we don't have the Ubuntu image locally, docker pulls it from our configured registry as though we had run docker pull Ubuntu manually. So docker creates a new container as though we had run a container create command manually and there are several commands which we can see for the further session. So let's recap this we have started with why we require this uh, docker and how we can use it then we had a dig in detail about docker and where we can use it then we move to the architecture and understand each and every components like docker client docker registry and docker daemon then we move to the their command so this is all about the dockers. Hope you understand it. If you have any queries or comment, please come in the comment section so that I will check and reward with the resolution. And most important part, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for the latest update. Thank you.